Exodus chapter 26, verse 15 through 37. You shall make upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits shall be the length of a frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. There shall be two tenons in each frame, for fitting together. So shall you do for all the frames of the tabernacle. You shall make the frames for the tabernacle, twenty frames for the south side, and forty bases of silver you shall make under the twenty frames, two bases under one frame for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, twenty frames, and there forty bases of silver, two bases under one frame, and two bases under the next frame. And for the rear of the tabernacle westward, you shall make six frames. And you shall make two frames for corners of the tabernacle in the rear. They shall be separate beneath, by joined at the top at the first ring. Thus shall it be with both of them. They shall form the two corners. And they shall be eight frames, with their bases of silver, sixteen bases. Two bases under one frame, and two bases under another frame. You shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the side of the tabernacle at the rear westward. The middle bar, halfway up the frames, shall run from end to end. You shall overlay the frames with gold, and shall make their rings of gold for holders for the bars, and you shall overlay the bars with gold. Then you shall erect the tabernacle according to the plan for it that you are shown on the mountain. And you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarn and fine twined linen. It shall be made with cherubim skillfully worked into it. And you shall hang it on four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold and with hooks of gold on four bases of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the clasps and bring the ark of the testimony in there within the veil. And the veil shall separate for you the holy place from the most holy. You shall put the mercy seat on the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. And you shall set the table outside the veil, and the lampstand on the south side of the tabernacle opposite the table. And you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the entrance of the tent a blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twisted linen, embroidered with needlework. And you shall make for the screen five pillars of acacia, and overlay them with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold, and you shall cast five bases of bronze for them. Today's passage gives a description of how the tabernacle was to be made. First, the structure of the tabernacle is given. From the outside, it was not possible to see the foundation, frame, and interior of the tabernacle, yet the instruction given shows precise measurements and materials that are very sturdy. Acacia wood used for the frame is a very sturdy wood that holds up the structure of the tabernacle and is overlaid with gold. This wood represents how God holds up the life of His people, even though it may not be visible. Silver was used for the base of the tabernacle. Silver was used throughout the Bible to represent redemption. Thus, tabernacle was built on the foundation of redemption and was supported by God who works for his people. Next, today's passage speaks of the tabernacle being divided into two sections by means of a veil. The first section is the most holy place, and in this section the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat was placed. This was the place where God's presence resided and only the high priest was allowed to enter, and only on the Day of Atonement, after having performed all the sacrifices of the cleansing of sin. This area was a pure and holy place, because God, who was holy, resided there, and those that came before God was to be holy. That's why the most holy place was divided with a veil. The second section was called the holy place, and here the bread of the presence and the lamp scent was placed, facing one another. Lampstand was the only source of light inside the tabernacle which allowed for the priests to see and perform their duties. The bread of presence represented fellowship with God, and Israel, through the priests, was able to have fellowship with God Almighty. Before Jesus came, the veil separated the most holy place with the holy place because the matter of sin was not taken care of. But as Jesus had died for all mankind, the veil was torn in half 
and we are now able to come before God through Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50 and 51 says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The scripture teaches us that through Christ, we have now become the very temple of God. Even though we do not see God working in our lives, He keeps us secure and steadfast, just like how the acacia wood kept the structure steady. God's redemptive work continues in our lives as one who has begun a good work in us will bring it to completion. As the Holy Spirit resides in us, the greatest blessing that we as believers have is the joy of having fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. God's Word illuminates our life and gives us life as we spend time with God through prayer, the meditation of His Word, and worship. As we continue to meditate on the tabernacle, let us spend more time in communion with God as He has given us a blessing to come before Him through Jesus Christ.